Ryan Trahan is crossing the United States in 30 days, starting with one penny. And there are so many interesting economic insights we're gonna dissect. Rule number three, I only have 30 days to deliver Mr. Beast this penny because they're going extinct next year. Wow, I'm an economist and this is the first I'm hearing about this. And it makes total sense because it costs more to make a penny than a penny is worth. And with inflation, this is just going to get worse. So it's really good that we're retiring the penny. I just, I had never heard of this and I wonder what triggered this. So this is weird. The Wikipedia page lists all the reasons why the penny should be abolished, but it doesn't actually say that the penny is being retired. Like how long ago was this article published? No way. This article was published on April Fool's Day. There is just no way that this is true. Uh, yeah, I found the same article and down at the bottom it says that this is just an April Fool's joke. Category you are fake news. I wonder if Ryan knows that and he's just like playing the joke up or if he seriously thinks the penny is about to be retired. It did works. it just so happen that the penny is going extinct or did that inspire the series. I just found out about this, Samir. I'm upset. That's crazy. <laughs> it's actually crazy. I found out about this last week and we're like preparing for this whole thing. And I'm like, guys. Dude, he really thinks the penny is about to be retired. That's, that's crazy. That's amazing though. This yeah. is like the kind of like final hurrah, like yeah. the, the ode to pennies <laughs> yeah. for all of America. I definitely could go a save the penny direction. Yeah. I know, I was thinking like, should we make that the campaign? But I realized I'd just rather people donate. Man, I really wish he had gone with that save the penny campaign because that would have been hilarious, but I guess he dodged a bullet there. You put it up for 30? Yeah, it's 30 online. Check this out. Oh, that's smooth. Okay, day two and he's buying a bike. This is actually really good. On day one, he was buying a lot of goods. Starting from a penny, that's really all you can do, right? So he buys a pen, eventually works his way up to do some water bottles. But goods are things that you can't sell more than once. But with a bike, that's capital. That's something that he can use to make money and it's not going away. And since he doesn't have any capital right now, there are actually really high marginal returns to that. Like, As of four minutes ago, I am a certified door dasher. He's getting a lot of return on that investment. And two days ago, we learned that uh, people here don't drink soda. So I made a bad financial decision and I'm not going to make that decision again. So we're going to go the old fashioned route. We're going to sell water. And I think my goal for the end of the day, I think we can break a hundred dollars. Hey, look at that. Supply is responding to demand, right? So supply should be trying to maximize profits. And what he realized by selling water and soda is that the profits on water were much higher. And so he ditches the soda and goes for that profit maximizing action. Your name? Richard. Richard, nice to meet you. Thank you so much. Richard is a sweetheart. Can we just appreciate Richard right now? Can we just comment like Richard is my hero in case he sees this? This video was actually inspired by a market power viewer named Becca. So if you could do me a favor, just go down in the comments and spam them saying Becca is my hero. Why Vegas? <laughs> Most hotels have casinos in them and they want you to come inside and gamble all of your money. So they make the hotels as cheap as possible to get you to come through the door. No way. Vegas hotels are hot dogs. This is actually the coolest economics lesson I learned watching the series and it makes total sense. All of these hotel casinos are basically offering the same service, an opportunity to flip a coin and win some money. So how do you get more people to throw away more money at your casino? Well, you just give them a room right next to it. So that guy just said it's only $31 a night here, but there's still deals online that are better than that. And I just found one for $17 plus tax. This is the same thing Costco does with hot dogs. Costco has been offering hot dogs and a soda for $1.50 back since the 80s. They also have really cheap rotisserie chickens. These are ways to get people into the store and buy things at a loss to the company so then they go spend money on the more profitable things. This concept of loss leaders is actually going to come back later on when I talk about kind of the overarching economic lesson from the series. I tried a window cleaning business so there are tons of businesses here and even more windows so I had the idea of basically before buying the ingredients for it asking business owners if this is something that they would want and if I can secure few customers then I can make an educated calculated risk and buy the, the supplies and make some money. Oh this is like an advanced market commitment. It's kind of silly in this example but they have been world changing. A good application of these is in vaccines. Labs don't want to invest a ton of resources into developing a vaccine for something that people can't afford. So think about diseases that might be big in poor countries where you might be able to eradicate it with vaccine but 
the country can't afford to actually buy the vaccine so the lab doesn't make that money back. Now we would think, you know, why don't we just have some altruism and make those vaccines anyway, but there are real resources that are needed to develop and produce those vaccines. So what you can do is get a group of donors or governments together who will then put out this advanced market commitment and say, if this vaccine is developed with these specifications, then we will buy this amount at this price and we'll give you that money once you satisfy these requirements. And so now the labs have a guarantee that if they invest those resources, they're gonna get a return on that investment. It's kind of trivial looking at window cleaning supplies, but these commitments used before COVID saved 700,000 lives. And we also had thousands more lives saved because we used advanced market commitments to develop COVID vaccines. Step three, deliver food on food delivery apps until the wheels fall off this thing. I want to absolutely speed run our way to the next plane ticket. Hey, gets a car, more capital, huge returns to that capital. He's able to buy a plane ticket the first day he's in that city. Call me a little weenie baby all you want, but I've decided to buy the $108.99 flight where my bag is included. Literally the first day in Denver, just speed ran our way to another ticket. Look, marginal returns capital, very high right now. But I forgot to extend my rental and fill this up with gas before I got reset. So I'm just gonna hope and pray that they don't charge me for not having a full gas tank. It's not that noticeable. This may have been a big brain move on Ryan's part. So normally rental companies charge way above market prices for gas as an incentive for you to just go do it yourself. But when gas prices started going up so quickly, I saw some car rental companies didn't update their contracts and it was actually cheaper to pay the company than to go fill it up yourself. In fact, if this is the case, then he could have rented the car with a full tank, siphoned the gas, sold that gas on like Facebook Marketplace, and then returned the car, and he could have just profited from the arbitrage. Uber Delivery is doing a promo where if I do 30 deliveries in the next five days, I get a $95 bonus. That's six deliveries a day. So even if we get reset every day, as long as I complete that, that's a $95 bonus. That's huge. A lot of gig economy platforms structure incentives this way, right? Gig Economies platforms are things like DoorDash, Uber, TaskRabbit, these kind of freelance things that you can do whenever you want. That's why people like working on these services because they have the flexibility to choose their own schedule. They can do the work in between what they're doing, but that makes it hard for the platform because they want a lot of people working at the same time to handle this rush demand. Well, if you want people to work longer and because labor supply curves slope up, you need to pay them more to work longer. And so they do this at this little discontinuous price jump to make sure people will work longer. It's time to cash in on our $95 30 trip delivery quest reward. Wait, no. Hey, uh, Preston, yeah. what does that say? Trips must begin in Denver. I'm going to try to contact customer support. Okay. Thank you. They can't help me. I legitimately got sad the first time I saw this. It was heartbreaking. But here's where I'm proud of Ryan. He ignores sunk costs. Things that have already happened in the past, things that you can't change, you just have to ignore them because you can't do anything about it going to the future. So you might as well just go back to doing the work that you can do. I do think he spends a little bit more money than he would have just because he needed something to cheer him up but mostly he's ignoring sunk costs and he's just going forward and doing what he's supposed to do. That's good economic thinking. Which is a good time to ask ourselves, is Ryan maximizing profits? Is he doing good economic thinking throughout this entire process? The series isn't over yet, but at this point, he has basically given up on every money-making opportunity except for DoorDash and WAG because those are the ones that offer him the highest return on his work. There are a few times he deviates, like if he sees a giant crowd, he knows there's a good opportunity to sell them water, but he's not telling jokes, he's not picking up cans, he is just doing the things that maximize profit. But back in Vegas, somebody actually pointed out that he was not maximizing profits. Confirmed cheapest water he's seen in the entire city, right here. If the market price of water is higher, why isn't Ryan selling it at that point? Why is he offering it at such a cheap rate? This gets back to the concept of loss leaders. Just like casinos aren't trying to maximize profits on their hotel rooms, Ryan is not trying to maximize profits on his water sales or even on DoorDash or any of these things. What he's trying to maximize profits on is content. He is making YouTube videos and he just needs things to occupy these videos. And in the past three weeks, he has gained 190 million views on his channel 
fueled by these daily vlogs. Even if you just take a conservative estimate of advertising rates, he has made at least $1 million on advertising revenue. And then you need to take on top of that that he's raised over a million dollars for Feeding America. So yes, Ryan is maximizing profits just by putting out loss leaders on his daily activities so he can get a huge attention on his other activities. It's really cool because it does feel very necessary. Like, oh my gosh, the penny's going away. And also it's really funny because the whole goal is to like give Mr. Beast a penny. So, you know, we're also giving him one of them before they go away. So that's mm. fun. 